That one had water in it. So today we're going to do our, uh, our compression test on this here uh, 4.6 Ford. And uh, of course if you didn't catch my last video, I ended it where I, where I made a discovery that, that it looked like where the, where the coolant was shooting out. It was actually more in the area of, uh, of the manifold gasket as opposed to a head gasket itself. Hoping that maybe that's the problem instead of it being a head gasket. So today we're going to do a compression test to find that out. That compression test is pretty simple. It's, it's really, really very easy, uh, very easy job. All you got to do is, is have the right tool for it. So here's our tool, which you just saw me assemble there, and it's pretty straightforward. All you have is a gauge here, and there's a little button on it to release pressure, and you have a quick release fitting on here, which our hose pops into. Now this particular one here I rented from AutoZone, so it only came with one fitting on the end, and, and it'll fit pretty much most spark plugs that, that I'd ever, or anybody that's renting a tool from AutoZone would ever need to do. However, some of these have a bunch of different fittings, so you can test all kinds of different sizes. You can do lawn mowers and every other thing, boats and hit and miss engines, whatever you want. So the first thing we want to do here is, of course, we need to get all of our spark plugs out. And one thing I'll just comment as, uh, as I'm taking it out here. One thing I really like about this 4.6 is that the spark plug holes are on the top of the head. Now some uh, some motors I've worked on, such as that uh, that 4.0 and that Ford over there, uh, the spark plugs are on the, the opposite side of the head, so they're way under here, and really the only way you can get to them is by going in through the wheel well, and even then it's not easy. Uh, I'm not sure how the GM motors are, like the LS1, because the LS1 is pretty much what you would really be comparing with with the 4.6 here if you want to compare apples to apples but uh, either way that's a that's a major plus there I really like that park plugs are right here easy access from the top like I say you don't have to have a manifold out of here even if the manifold and everything everything was on here you don't have to remove anything to get the spark plugs out you can still get to them easily by just sticking a, uh, an extension in there so the next thing we do here is we just uh, we just thread our tool in here. We just thread the hose in as if it was a, uh, a spark plug going in there, and you'll feel it's snug up and it's got a nice big O-ring on it. So once it gets tight, you're good. And uh, I found it easier since you got that quick disconnect. If you disconnect the gauge from the uh, the line, I found that it makes it a little bit easier to uh, thread the line, and then you can go ahead and hook up the gauge. Just a few pointers I'll make here. If you're doing this with an engine that's totally assembled, you really don't have to worry about it. But uh, since my engine's disassembled here, I put a bunch of uh, rags inside my manifold ports here so that way uh, dirt didn't get in there. But obviously if you're getting ready to crank the engine over, you definitely don't want anything in there because it could get sucked into the engine and that would be no bueno. Then I'd definitely have to pull the heads off. So uh, if you have any, uh, if you're in the boat that I am and you have the manifold already off make sure you don't have any rags in here thing I got to do is I got to pull out the fuse for my fuel pump because of course in uh, in pulling out the manifold I also disconnect the fuel lines so if I were to leave that fuse in there as soon as I turn the ignition on which I'll be doing in a minute fuel would come shooting out of those lines and that's not good either it's uh, it's this third fuse up here just pulled that out now the uh, fuel pump won't come on we don't have to worry about fuel shooting out lighting us on fire so now all we got to do is go ahead and uh, crank the engine over a few times and uh, you let it crank over a couple times just so you know for sure that uh, you're getting a good reading and uh, once you do that that's all there is to it. I think what I'll do here is I'll do, uh, I'll do all four on that side of the engine one after the other so that way you can see uh, the readings of each one and uh, hopefully if there's not a problem they should be uh, pretty close to each other within about 20% so for example, if, uh, if we get a reading, which we, I doubt we'll get this high, but if we got a reading at 200 PSI in one of them, 20% uh, off of that would be, would be 40. So we wouldn't really expect to see anything uh, above 240 or below 160. All right, let's see what we get here.
Hi, Tubes. So uh, as you saw there uh, in the last slide, the, uh, the results weren't exactly uh, what I was hoping for. By all means, they were what I was expecting, but uh, you know, I was hoping that maybe there was that off chance that, uh, that it wasn't actually the head gasket. Uh, but I figured I would explain real quick because I know not everybody watching this video probably knows what the whole this whole head gasket compression thing is all about. So uh, real quick, in, uh, in, in pretty much just about any engine out there, most of them anyway, uh, you got two main parts to the to the engine. You have the block itself and you have the head. And the head, of course, bolts to the block and there's a gasket between the head and the block. And the reason for this gasket is simple. You have your piston inside the block and they're traveling up and down through the cylinder. And so you can think of the head as like the cap for that cylinder. And so that needs to be sealed. You can't just bolt metal to metal and expect it to hold any pressure at all. So that's why you have a gasket in the middle. And in addition to this, you have coolant and oil passages that go from the block up into the head. And so you need to make sure that this coolant and oil doesn't get mixed with each other. And you also don't want that going into your cylinder. And when you have a blown head gasket, what's happening is that that gasket isn't doing what it's supposed to do. Number one is it's not holding compression. So instead of your piston coming up and decreasing that volume inside of your cylinder and giving you a whole lot of pressure or compression, what's happening is that a lot of that pressure, or at least some of it, is leaking out. And so that's why in our compression test on those front two cylinders, we we're only getting a reading of about 90 PSI, whereas the back one, the one was about 120 and the one was about 150. That's what they should all be. But since the two in the front are low, that indicates a problem. Now, since I had white smoke coming out of the exhaust, what that was an indication of is that coolant, because remember I said that you have those coolant passages that go up into the head. Well, since you have white smoke coming out of the exhaust, that's an indication that that gasket isn't keeping the coolant separated from that cylinder. And so some of the coolant's actually leaking into the cylinder and blowing out of the exhaust as steam. And last but not least, I noticed that the oil in the valve cover gasket was a little bit on the milky side. Instead of it just being, being brown, like kind of like maple syrup, the way oil is supposed to look, uh, it, was actually, it was actually like white colored. And that's an indication that it's been mixing with water, aka engine coolant. So that's what, that's what the whole deal here is. That's why we did this compression test and that hopefully explains to you what a blown head gasket is, why it's not good. And so now all we got to do is just keep taking apart the engine and uh, replace the head gasket. That's pretty much all there is to it at this point. So I think I'm gonna end this video here. Uh, if you guys liked it, definitely give it a like, smash that like, like button, that helps me out a lot. Uh, if it was exceptionally good, maybe even consider sharing it. And as always, if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe. All right, Tubes, thanks for watching. See you later.